I know that everyone has just died sufficiently so you cannot fall asleep. One of the things is I'm not going to allow you to. Um, we're going to uh, definitely have this uh, a dialogue session. That means I'm not the only person that speaks. You have to speak as well. When we talk about the culture of the barbershop, and since we do have women, it will be the same context as a beauty shop, right? In a beauty shop, there are some unwritten rules and there's some engagement that uh, happens naturally and we will have it here. Now, unfortunately, I didn't want to move everything, but we would have moved all the tables and we just would have had chairs, much like at the beauty shop or the barbershop. Um, your name, ma'am? Tanisha Harris. Tanisha Harris. Have you been to a barbershop before? Yes. Tell me your experience there. Um, a barbershop or not a beauty shop? Barbershop. barbershop. Um, very loud. Um, <laughs> Very loud. Yeah, like the talking, the the level of, no, it's not like the level of engagement. Yes. Okay. Very, very loud. Uh huh. Um, I guess I would say like honest. You get a lot of honest talk in there. Um, with people just sharing, just sharing, just talking. And okay. Sharing. Stuff. Honest, right? Um, Mr. Poe. Well, you have this this a lot of. Politics, talk at the barbershop, uh, a lot of sports uh, that they are talking about, uh, and a lot of information about what's going on in the community is talk at the barbershop. Okay, yes sir. Uh, the bar the part of the barbershop is where you go play cards, games, the dominoes. Um, you're talking about a very old barbershop. People don't play that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they still play spades. Right, okay. Um, it's also a place where, um, like guys, I guess, get together, like you said, and talk about what happened in the past week, if you call a weekend. And also, it's a place where some guys, especially young guys, go out and hang out and smoke. Hmm. We'll talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now, particularly, yes, ma'am. Can I add something to that? Yes. Because the barbershops I'm, I'm in, not only am I looking at it from a historical point of view, because mm -hmm. a lot of older gentlemen mm -hmm. share stories from the past that compare to what happened when they were growing up in the barbershop, their lives, their history. So I can say, an historical aspect to it. And then as a mother, take my son there, my son will sit back and look at them and listen to them and they'll write back up. Do you really think they did that mama? Okay. <laughs> so that aspect of children learning from that environment, the okay. historical effects, or seeing the activities there is playing a part into what goes on outside of what I'm expecting in the household. Okay. All right. Welcome everyone that just came. Um, we just started, so you, you didn't miss it much. We're just, you know, again, looking at the whole tenements of the barbershop. One of the things that I always, you know, you just can't take for granted that people have been, right? Uh, you know, female, just since we do have a female party, we're going to take the beauty shop as well. Looking at those, those same ethos and those relationships that are built there. One of the things, particularly, that is very informative for instruction purposes is, is it's very intergenerational, right? Intergenerational learning is a part that is missing in school, right? You have older women, middle-aged women, and young women, right? So they learn social graces that you might can't talk about in school, right? Hmm, you do know you have on a dress. <laughs> right? Older women, my grandmother is very much into, oh my goodness. Your arms are out, right? <laughs> right? My daughter is 10, right? And you know, now little girls don't flat their hair up and put it up. They want a flat iron, right? So my grandma's like, uh, oh, it's right here with all this hair out, right? It needs to be put up, right? So in that same thing, the, the intergenerational conversations and how do we really engage and use those things that can be very instructive for classroom purposes. Now let's look at this picture. Um, Ms. Coles, what does it say to you? Uh, a young man is getting his hair cut, but he looks so sad. He looks sad. Yeah, sure. First, 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 first time. He's nervous. 
Nervous. Okay, look at his age now. Is that really his first time? No. I Okay. Somebody told him to sit still. <laughs> they probably told him to sit still. What else? Following that camera. Looking at the camera. And also, he probably knew he was going to the barber shop, and he probably didn't want to go. Mm -hmm. That's what I was thinking. He didn't want to have a haircut. Mm -hmm. Didn't want to have it. Yes, ma'am. What do you say? What do you see? Um, I thought period food looked like. I mean, if someone's in mid conversation, it looks like he's he listening. Okay, Girl. listening because again, in this environment, <coughs> particularly for young males, it's a lot of listening. Right? There's a lot of listening, and then you have to negotiate, you know, which person has the best idea, right? Who's the best debater, you know, all of those things, right? However, what else do you see in the picture? Yes? Um, I might be judgmental, but look, I can see from the hand the guy who caught me say, look like an elder, uh, older gentleman, probably. Mm, okay, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, Mr. Crosby. He is holding his head still, so he's uh -huh. probably, like what uh, the slaves right here said, and what Dr. Mass is saying, probably curious about what his hair cut is going to look like when it's done. Okay. What does it say about teaching? Hands yes. On. What did you say? Hands on. It has to be hands on, right? Mm -hmm. One of the things that is we're moving so far away from because of all of these different ideas of what's happening in school. We're afraid to really be hands on, right? Because just go with me. He's guiding the process, <laughs> right? He he is guiding the process, right? Now, in the barber shop or, or beauty shop, you I control this, right? Yep. And it's about not only me guiding it, but it's about trust, right? One of the things that we're going to talk about when we go into this whole thing, when you go away from home, right? You have to go to a new city. Dr. McMullen, when you came to Milledgeville, <laughs> how did you get your hair done? Oh, let's see. I, okay, how did I get it done? I went to, first of all, it was like a networking thing. I had to call somebody who knew somebody, and then I ended up going to this person and had a lot of trust in him. All right, now. It's the same negotiation when you said I had to call someone to call someone to call someone. Now, if we're talking about education, right? Think of this whole idea. If you come to my shop, our school is Poe International, right? I'm the principal, right? What could happen? I could say one or two things, Ms. Cole. I could say, oh, who does your hair, right? Or I could say, oh, who does your hair, <laughs> right? Or who did it, right? Right? I said the same thing, right? But there were different connotations. What was the first one? Looks good. I want to find out who did it. Who did it? I might want to go. Right? The next one is. You pay for that? Okay, so in this whole business of education, it's the same thing. Because when students are in your class, you impact their head, right? Mm -hmm. But the whole thing about particularly this picture, I'm not going to let you into my head unless I trust you with it, mm -hmm. right? I become, you become in my classroom a walking billboard for my service, mm -hmm. right? When students transfer to another school or even within the building, they can say, oh, you must have been in Miss Cole's class, I can tell, <laughs> right? Or, oh, you were in Miss Cole's class. Because there's a way that we take on our style, the students take on our style, right? In the barbershop, particularly African-American barbershop, each barber has a different skill set. Some do what? Fades very well, right? Parts, all that design, right? Or you can have my plain barber is this with tape, beard, out, <laughs> right? My son started going to Chris, right? But now that he's older in the high school, he doesn't want to go to Chris, right? So he's in the shop, it's like, I'm going to try him, right? So I'm like, uh, you're not getting any of that crazy stuff. But in that same sense, how do we then build on the expertise of the people within the building? But it's all based on trust. Coming into the barber shop, Miss, what's your name, ma'am? Harris. Miss Harris, come on up. Take that for me. This is the beauty shop. Now, come on in. Now, first of all, in the barber shop, there's, uh-uh, come in. 
<laughs> right? There are some things that happen naturally that need to happen in classes, right, in school. When you enter the barbershop, come on in. How you doing, ma'am? Good. All right, now, usually in the barbershop or the beauty shop. Now, if you were coming in a beauty shop and you were coming for service, Miss Williams, you would probably have a different demeanor when you come in. What is it, usually? I can tell you when it's time for my wife to go, she starts pulling out all of these hats and these design <laughs> things. Like me too. To hide it, right? Right. So your persona is very different when you enter, okay. right? You're coming in with a bad hair that's kind of like, oh, don't really want to be seen. <laughs> Let me slide in the chair, right? <laughs> However, the beauty, the, the barber or the beautician, everyone has made some type of welcoming gesture, right? Now, in the barbershop, Poe, if you're first coming into the barbershop and we don't know you, what kind of sign can we give him? Give him, you know, face you, I mean, you give him. Stop, you just said it. it's just going to be this. Because I don't know you, right? I'm not going to disrespect you, but it's like, hmm, right? Some other people might just look him up and down. Okay, we're going to see how this works, right? But whoever the owner is or whoever's doing the work has some type of greeting, right? We'll be right with you, right? Okay, so then while you're sitting there, what's going to happen? What's going to happen in the project? Communication. Communication. Right? Yes. All kinds of things. We don't just talk about women in the barbershop, right? We talk about politics, you talk about science, you talk about school, there's a lot of things, right? And the conversations kind of just filter, right? In school, what usually happens in a 50 minute classroom? It's one side, and we talk about the same thing for the whole 50 minutes, right? How boring is that? That's all of us, right? So again, many conversations and changes. Here, you come in, we finally say, I'll be right with you. I come to you, or we're gonna you know, make this the whole idea. You get in the chair, now this is the beauty shop because I'm starting to work with the beauty shop because I have a daughter, I have to take her. The first thing when you come in this chair, what happens? They ask you what do you want? What do you want? They ask you, no matter how many times you've been in there, they say what? What do you want today? How many times do we fail to ask our students what do they want? Wow. We've never asked, right? We assume that you're coming here for this service, right? And you get what I give you, right? Mm -hmm. So let's say, but well, what do you want today? Which one? Oh, I want to just have a little trim. Trim? You want to try a new color? Um, sure. Try mm -hmm. a new color. Now how, why was that so easy for me to ask you, do you want to try a new color? I think your bone structure, your skin, I think it's real hot. And I think it'll look good on you. Say what? She trusts me, right? Because when it comes to dealing hair, hair, coloring, or anything else that might change my normal look that I'm comfortable with, mm -hmm. they have to trust you. Okay. And yes. You, and you said something about your bone structure and all that that's hot, you found something really good about her. Okay. And you're going to take it and enhance it. Yes. Um, like beauty like salons or barbershop, you build that relationship with that person. So, and it, cause I know, when I go to the barbershop, I always go to the same person. Same person. Mm -hmm. yeah. The same person. Mm -hmm. It's because it's built, relationships are built over time. Mm -hmm. Do we have enough time in one school year to build those long and lasting relationships? Yes and no. If we open ourselves to yes, do it, right? Yes. When you first go into town, like I know Dr. McMullen shared stories of you know coming to town. Because when I first came to Minnesota, it's like, oh my God, I don't know these people. Who's gonna cut my hair? Because again, our appearance is something that is near and dear to our hearts, right? So you go to a shop and then you just start surveying people. Their practices. It's like, he can't cut my hair. He talks too much, right? He talks on the phone. He moves out. And so, again, I'm negotiating what's going to happen in this space. The other thing is, when I get in this chair, this becomes what? My IEP. It's individualized. Now, for the beauty shop, I'm before. Now, you told me what we want. Now, what's the next step, Dr. Manson? The next step is let's get started. Where do you usually start in the beauty shop? 
at the bowl, right? You go to the bowl and this is what you have to do. What do you have to do to this? You have to give in to the process, right? No service has really taken place. All you've done is do, do what? Wash away some of that stuff. Right? You haven't even started, I haven't done anything yet except for got you in this chair, you release, and you what? Give in to the process. You only do that because what? You trust that person. Right? Now, my family just moved to Warner Robins. My wife is having withdrawals because Miss Lily has done her hair since she's 10 years old. Oh, wow. Right? Yeah. Separation anxiety at its worst, right? Because again, if you are connected with this person for the relationship, you'll come to the shop. Miss Lily here today? Well, she went to lunch. What time is she coming back? <laughs> right. And look, you can't come. Beauty shop or barber shop, you cannot come in in a hurry, right? It's like, I'll wait. Right? Because I can start you. No. <laughs> No, you know, not to be rude. Now, if you're really connected to it, look. What time are you Right? You have the relationship so intense with the person. It's like, look, I'm on the way. Do I need to pick you up something? Right? You're buying food, whatever, so that they can meet your needs. Right? So, once we start this, you give into the process because ultimately, Trust me, right? It's built on trust. This young man, I don't think, again, from the whole idea, he wasn't nervous. It's like, okay, curious. But the particular thing is, teaching has to be hands-on, right? And then we see the other thing, the tool. What is the tool? How do you then shape and mold the head? It wasn't just that. You had to hold it because you have to guide it. We're too hands-off now because of the non-connection to the relationship, all right? So we'll have some more of the gallery stuff, but let me go to part two. All right, here we go. Um, Dr. Mays, read that for me. We can, whenever or wherever we choose, successfully teach all children whose schooling is of interest to us. We already know more than we need in order to do this. Whether we do, whether we do must finally depend on how we feel about the fact that we haven't so far. That's right. That was 1973. Right. We don't need to have another conference about anything in schools, right? Everything that we need to know is already there. But there's something very significant. What does it say? Whose schooling is of interest to us, right? Are we really interested in every person that comes into our shop, right? Mm, this customer doesn't look like he pays well. <laughs> right? If you ever worked as a waiter or waitress <laughs> in school, you kind of feel people out like, <laughs> don't believe they're going to be good tippers, right? So it's like, <laughs> right? Just, I'm going to interact with you on the bare minimum, right? Because we make those type of things. It doesn't seem of interest to me, so I'm going to give you just enough. So in that same sense, we have to be very honest of what we haven't done so far. Mm. An interested person can do a little but a committed person can do much. You can take a student from here all the way to there if you're committed. Interested just means, oh, get back to me, right? Committed says I'm going to do what? Whatever it takes at all costs. All right? So whether we do must finally depend on how we feel about the fact what? We can't, oh, educators and teachers and teachers. Mm. It is true, right? We have to say, what can I do more of, period, right? One thing about a beautician in the African-American community, Dr. Manson, mm -hmm. we specialize in miracles. I'm taking my daughter. I told you I'm starting this whole new research. I've seen people come in with rice and leave with spaghetti, 
<laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> it has been pressed. They work miracles with in the African American culture because of the kinky, the drawn up, and because of flat iron, pressing combs, or whatever the case may be. You can see it grow. In, 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 in your face, right? Or you can attach it, right? You can create. You can create something that wasn't there. Ultimately, it's work, right? One thing about the barbershop and the beauty shop which is so interesting to me. They're always what on their feet, and they're always moving. They multitask. You got one what under the the dryer, one at the bowl, one in the chair, right? And servicing all of those persons, but I'll be right back. I see it, she's like, oh, not dry yet, right? Put that back down, go to the next one. One teacher on his or her feet can do more than a teacher in his or her seat. You got to be up, right? There's a whole way, they're managing the whole time. I got a customer here, that one. Oh, you're next. Now, some people in the barbershop don't understand that if you came in, how are you next? And you just came in. It's like, what? I've been here, right? But what happens in that particular scenario, Mr. Crosby? I had an appointment. I have an appointment. The relationship is already established. You know I come in on the second Tuesday, that's 12. Right? So I go first. <laughs> now, some people might not like it because you're new to the community, to this learning environment, because one thing about it, it's a learning community because during all of this is going on, there's going to be some learning that is transpiring. You're like, something that I missed because I've been here, right? He comes every Tuesday, second Tuesday at 12. I understand unwritten rules. How do we negotiate those? All right? <laughs> Let's dissect it quickly. Yes, man, what does it say to you? It's all about perspective. All about perspective, right? Mr. Hollis. Uh, I think, I mean, I think that it's telling me that uh, people don't take things seriously, or, or they, they take it, yeah, they don't take it in perspective, basically. All right, who has a dirty job? Who's, whose job is dirtier? Dan, talk about that. Yeah, that's, that's, I'm not gonna get <laughs> on that one. They're both the uh, problem. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You, gotta, you gotta take a stand. Well, <laughs> Again, this could, strike a whole conversation at the barbershop, politically, emotionally, socially. Which one is dirtier? You have to take a statement. I suppose the butt wipe, okay. <laughs> <laughs> the toilet paper. Yes. Yeah, so. And why? Just because of the label that I use to describe okay. it. Okay. <laughs> because of the parts where they have to, right. to attend to. Yes, yes ma'am. Which one has a dirtier job? Oh, I'm sitting here thinking about the two, but I was thinking of it from a different perspective. Okay. The toothbrush is still going to be there, and the toilet paper is giving of itself completely every time, oh. so eventually it's going to run out and not even exist. Right, because oh, they do a job and it's gone, but right, <laughs> and it's flush. Right. Yeah. The toothbrush, right, goes back in our mouths every day, mm -hmm. right? the dirtiest part of our body, right? Mm -hmm. And you're supposed to throw it away with every, what, six months? Yeah. Three. 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 Oh, yeah. My bad. Oh, my bad. <laughs> For years, right? Exactly. So in that same idea, right, you could look at it from that perspective of, again, I have to do the same thing over and over. Right, this one gives up itself and it's over. When you think about students, do you want your students to have a hundred experiences or the same experience a hundred times? A hundred experiences or the same experience one hundred times? I would say the same experience. You want to learn it. So, right. Okay, what did you say? Depends on the experience. Yeah, to me it depends on what the experience is. Okay, yes. 
your, your idea. I'm thinking 100 different experiences is better than the same experience over and over. If you're talking about the true essence of learning, right? The true essence of learning would have to have variation, right? We're in school, what, 180 days. Unfortunately, we have big parties on the 100th day. And what do teachers start doing? Countdown. Countdown. You know, we put up little calendars and we do like this in the morning. <laughs> right? So what do you want 100 experiences or the same experience 100 times. It's a dirty job, but someone has to do it, right? All right, the barbershop is culture. Again, uh, Dr. Madison, you talked a lot about this, the, the idea of the historical ideas of this was the place. Now, um, in the barbershop, the African-American barbershop particularly, that pole represented a lot of other things because in the, the, the red on the pole, what do you think it represented? Blood, it was also where you came for doctor or medication, right? So you have the doctoring, then you have what? The appearance, and the shears weren't just for cutting uh, hair, right? Because a lot of those uh, original barbers were also medical physicians, right? So in that, when you see that barber pole, that's what that represents the blood. It's like, again, you could come here for medical purposes as well. All right, for the most of the 20th century within the residential separated African American community, community this found fundamental social institution was a central location for meaning, meaningful association and dialogue and learning among men, right? It's almost like, again, a country club, right? There's a special thing that comes and takes place in here. When we leave, it stops, right? When you usually come in, it's like, oh, men that don't even know each other, right? Speak. But on the street, if I saw Mr. Poe and I don't know him, I don't engage him, right? And here, as soon as we sit down, everybody becomes what? Equal, right? Everyone is valuable in this environment. Everyone adds to a conversation. So again, the learning takes place on a lot of different occasions. Now, part of how I started this, I was a uh, fourth grade teacher and was sanctioned as we're going to try a new idea of single gender learning, right? So you put 12 third grade men in a room, right, and a teacher, and all of these magical things are supposed to happen. But they don't. We assume because they were male, and they were black, and I was male, and I was black, that it was all this magic was going to take place. Well, it didn't, because there was no commonality, right? Because most of the young men, out of the 12 young men that I had, only three of them were from both parenting homes, right? So their ideas of what happened were totally different than my expectation, right? And my experience. So you start having these little conversations like, well, what do you all do? How have you? So I said, have you? going to the barbershop. Out of those 12, maybe four do, because the other ones, what do you think were happening as far as it relates to hair? They were going to the beauty shop instead? They be Get cut at home. Get cut at home. Their mother would do it, or it would be cut, right? So it was like, oh my goodness. So it came out of desperation in regards of how do we build a community? Right? We built this like, okay, this is an experience. So, you know, then you have to get mothers involved. It's like, oh, do you mind if I take him to the bomb shop? Right? So, what happened, you know, out of this whole engagement, I started this whole idea of we're going to turn this class into a bomb shop. Right? Went and got barber chairs, right? Three of them, right? And in front of the class, removed all the desks. We just have chairs, right? Around. You have what? One that particular thing that it happens at the barbershop and the beauty shop. What's all around the room? Pictures. pictures. Mm -hmm. Well, pictures. Mirrors. Okay. Mirrors. 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 Mm -hmm. What? What do mirrors do? What do they add to this process? They show you the beginning and the end. The beginning and the end, right? You can see the whole process, the learning process. You can see when I come in with the bad hair day sliding under, and I see the metamorphosis, I see the transformation, all right? So again, this young man particularly here had never been, so he was very engrossed in how do you 
engaged. I said, you know, how do you negotiate? How do you interact? You know, those soft skills that we say, oh, the kids, they can't, they can't interact. They don't know how to speak correctly. That's because we haven't had those experiences, right? So again, there's more information about the barbershop. This historical barbershop intrigued the male-dominated territory. What do they really do in there? So again, people have tied into this institution, right? The healthcare profession has tied into now on Saturdays, particularly in um, the African-American community, where you're going in and doing uh, cancer, uh, prostate cancer, diabetes, all of those things, those checks. Because men, who we are, is I'm not going to admit to you, Ms. Coles, that I have a deficiency, right? So I'm really not going to come in here and go to the doctor. So what do I need to do? Maybe bring those services to the barbershop. So in there, I feel a little more comfortable. Do you mind if I take your blood pressure? Yeah, here. Because if I go to the doctor, ultimately I'm saying what? Something is wrong with me, right? Again, men have a different way of negotiating. We thank goodness for Siri, because if we didn't, we would still be lost. Because most men are not going to do what? That's for directions. It's like, mm, oh, I know. <laughs> Look, I'll figure it out. <laughs> Look, we got it. <laughs> We've been on this road before, don't we have it? <laughs> We'll stop in the gas station, but as long as you're still out of the car, you know where it can. But again, I'm not necessarily going to admit it, right? So we thank goodness for her, right? So this gives a little bit more information about you know the process of what was done. But I wanted to talk particularly about the dimensions that needs to be there when we're talking about building the relationships, all right? Again, the dimensions of African American culture. One, when you're talking about teaching a group of people that come from a tribal group of people. There's some things that have to happen. Tribal people, whether it be African, uh, Indian, tribal has a different effect on learning. It needs to be circular, right? What happens in a circle? You see everyone. You see everyone. That means everyone has value. What else? It connects. It connects? Yes, sir. Yeah. But it's also, there is, there is a hierarchy. It's a hierarchy, very much so, right? But then it makes it easier to do what? Communicate. Most learning takes place, how we traditionally set it up is linear, right? We put everybody in a line, right? So if you really need to get a message to him, if we were in a line, what do you have to do? Turn around, right? This was a management, like, oh, are you talking? Turn around, right? If we're in a circle, that makes us all equal, right? So again, uh, Dr. Uh, Roger Boykin talks about some of these dimensions that need to be in a particular classroom. And again, I was doing this for my own ideas of how do I make these young men more successful. These are the tenements that needed to be in the class. Spirituality, and we're not necessarily talking about you know, Christianity. Spirituality has nothing to do centrally with just whatever God or deity you serve, right? It's what is the essence of the feel of the room, right? Spirituality. Harmony. Harmony. What does that say to you? What is harmony? A one accord. A one accord, right? A lot of times in a lot of classrooms, it's a dissonance, right? There has to be some harmony. Harmony does not mean that we're all singing the same note, right? Because we could have a four-part harmony, right? Alto, center, bass, right? Um, Dr. Manson, roll, roll, roll your boat. You know that song? Everybody know that one? All right, here we go. Start. Roll, roll, roll your boat gently down the stream. Turn down the stream, where the light is but a dream. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, if you keep doing this in a round, right? Eventually, if, again, if we split it up, alto, tenor, bass, right? We're not necessarily singing the same notes. However, we're singing the same song, right? Harmony, right? Movement. What is movement? That's simple, right? In a classroom, do we normally have movement? No. And again, I was talking about males, right? And we said, oh, they're kind of static learners. Well, well, we know that. Why do we have to sit down the whole time? Right? Movement doesn't necessarily just mean standing up. Right? If your lecture is just the, just like this, there's no movement, right? There's no movement in you. There has to all that verb. What is verb? Mr. Crosby, what do you think that is? 
Can be challenging, thought provoking. I'm not sure. Verve. Uh, it's small. The gusto. It's what you do. It's your pedagogy. Look, it's like, oh. Because there's a difference in content and pedagogy. How do you make it come alive? Uh, again, we don't just go to that particular shop, whether it be beauty or barber, just because they cut well. There's the verb. What's in here? Right? There's something that keeps bringing me back, right? It might be because every time I know on Tuesday, Mr. Poe is going to come and he is so animated, but he knows everything in the community about the grassroots movement. So I have to go because it's the, uh, it's the verb, right? I don't keep going to a place that is stale, right? That's why many students, when they get to middle school, skip school, right? It's no verb there. Or they skip certain classes, right? They will go to some people's classes like, oh, I thought you were absent today. Mm, just doing your class. <laughs> right? All right, affect. What is that? Affective domain. What are we talking about? Emotion. Emotion. Right? Again, we talk about this whole thing about your hair, right? If I start talking about your hair, if I go back there and cut off about five inches of Miss Cole's hair, Right now, there will probably be some emotional. <laughs> there was, she never said there will be problems. <laughs> right? Affect, you know, how does this impact you emotionally? What does this do for you, right? Communalism, community. We have to feel a part of the community. Communalism. I have to feel that there's an engagement, that I'm valuable. Right? We say crazy things like, oh, these kids have no values. That's not true. You have to say,